So the next dissection is that of the fish. So this is a tilapia fish, a body fish, which belongs to the class of stasis. So we can see it. We we'll start by describing usually the external parts. This is the terminal mouth. You see that the mouth is at the end. Terminal mouth. You see the eyes, and the eyes have no eyelids, but they only have a flower of tissue that closes and protects the eye. So they do not blink their eyelids like we do. They're always open as such. Then we have the operculum. This is the operculum this way, the operculum that closes or covers the gills. And then here we have the fins. This one is the dorsal fin. You see it with blue rays. This is the caudal fin or the tail fin. You see that when the fish is moving, it flashes from time to time and helps to propel it. The new one is the anal fin. This one is right at the, the anal region. Then you have the pectoral and the pelvic fins. These ones are paired, so you can see them. These ones function in making the fish stable and also balancing the fish and also make, preventing it from yawning. So in yawning, it's a situation where the fish can be moving in water like this and then it suddenly begins to turn like this. So that's yawning. So this dorsal fin and the anal fin, they prevent the fish from yawning. And then this one, they push the fish forward. So the pelvic and the pectoral fins, they help the fish to slow down in water when it is moving, and they also have it to increase the speed. So you watch a fish, you will see that it moves and opens and closes these fins. So another aspect of this external vision is that the dorsal part of the fish is slightly darker. You can see it darker, but the ventral part is whitish. So this dark dorsal surface blends the fish when you are seeing it from above with the ground, and then this whitish surface blends it if you were under the water and seeing it up so that you see it as if it's the sky and you will not easily see it so as to catch it. So this is a form of camouflage and it makes the fish to adapt itself into the water. So we can see the scales, the, the, cy the cyclot scales that cover the whole of the body of the fish. And you see that they are pointed backwards. So this fish is also slippery and it has the streamlined shape. The streamlined shape means that the head is small, the body is big gradually and gradually goes down so that it eases the movement of the fish without friction. For example, if I were the one to be moving inside water, there's the tendency that the water will be touching on my shoulders and it will push me backward. That will give a lot of resistance and I will swim with difficulty. But the fish only goes very smoothly like that. So we can be asked to isolate, to take out a fin of a fish. So if we are to take out one fin of the fish, then what we'll do is that we'll cut off the operculum onto one side, cut it off like this, onto one side to expose the gills. These are the gills here. So these are the flaps of the gills. And then we can cut out one gill. We can cut out one gill. We can cut out the whole of it. Because you can be asked to dissect the fish to display the structures responsible for breeding or gaseous exchange. So what we would require to do is to cut out one of the gills, the gill filaments, like that. Cut it out. Then I'll put it, I'll put it on a white tile. Let me wash it. Put it on a white tile. So I I isolate one. I've cut more than one. I need just one. So I put it on a white tile. <coughs> and then I observe it. So when I put it on the white tile now, what I observe is that I see that these are a kind of, this is a gill. This is a gill filament. These are a kind of rays that you see. So you see that here, there are some things up here which are like small teeth. If you touch them with a finger in a big fish, you will feel them. Those are what we call the gill records. You see them there like that. And then these ones are the gill filaments. So this one here in the middle, which is like what is holding the gill filaments together, is what is called the gill arc. So the only parts you label on the gill are the gill filaments, which are these ones. And then you have the gill arc, which is this hardened structure that holds the gill filaments together. And then you have the gill records, which are inside here, they're harder. 
and they can even wound. If you put your hand inside the mouth of the fish and you go to the gills, they can even wound your finger. So those are the gill records. So if you were to draw the gill, this is just simply what you do. You remove it and place it on the board, on the white tile, and what you draw is simply to draw some like that. You try to make this side to look hardened. Then you make this one like this, many of them like this, and then you make this one. So these ones are the gill records. Then this one is the gill arc. And then these are the gill filaments. So this is just all about drawing of the gill, if you were to display. This is just all that you do. There's no other thing you do there. And that's just all. So we'll go now straight into the dissection proper the decision proper of the fish. And the very interesting thing is pinning. So pinning of the fish is done not like in mammal, but it is similar to that of a bird, but it is not exactly since the fish does not have wings. So we pin it, starting from the mouth and such, and then we come to the tail region. So we put a nail on the tail region as such, We pin onto our box. This is how it has to stand. This is how we pin it. And then we could also pin, we could also pin, so open a little bit, and then we pin the operculi. So I can use longer pins, but I can easily pin it for me. So pin the opaque line on the left and on the right. So I pin it like that. So this is all about the pinning. So after pinning it, what I do is that if I were to determine the sex of this fish when it was out, like this one, you cannot know whether this fish is female or male. But what is there to determine the sex externally is that you look at the cloacal end. That's the cloacal region, the, the region of the anus. And you count the openings that are there. If you see two openings, then you know that it is a male. Because the male will have two openings, that for sending out feces, and that for sending out urine and sperm. Then if it has three openings, then you know that that's a female. Because the female will have another opening for sending out urine, another one for sending out eggs, and then another one for sending out feces. But you may not actually count them as the feces like this, but it will take time you count. Like for this one, this is, there are three openings here. This one down here, this is another one, and this is the third one. You can see that this feces coming out from this one, so this is the anus. You can see another thing coming out from this one and then another one down here. So it means that this one has three openings. So this is certainly a female fish. So we have not looked at this one, but we'll open this one and we'll see inside the sex of this one. So to dissect the fish, we make an incision just a little bit above the cloaca. We make it laterally like that with our scissors. So we make the incision down like this. Then we extend it a little bit to go down. We also extend it a little bit to go down this way. So when we extend it now to go down like that, we cut up in the median, we cut it up in the middle as such, putting our blunt end of the scissors inside, and then the sharp end remaining outside. So we cut it up like this till we reach the area where it joins to the gills. So we cut up and reach here, we stop there, and then what we can do now is only to increase this our incision to go down, but being careful not to cut the intestines. So we we'll now open it. We we'll cut it now to go up like that. We we'll now open what we have. We'll open it on two sides, and we pin. We we'll pin it like that. Pin it onto the board. Now pin it onto the board. So these are the abdominal contents of a fish in situ. So as we can see, it's quite simple. So what we need to do here now is simply to first start by displaying the alimentary canal. So we'll, we'll 
display the element. These are the intestines that we are seeing here. So we display the alimentary canal, and you will note that certain differences that are there. You see that this is the liver. It's quite small, not as big as in birds. And then you see that this one is the stomach. This one here contains some food. These are the intestines here. So I will now display the intestines onto one side. So I can open it up this way, and I bring it this way. I put it onto this side. I open up this one. I make sure it is in the way that it is quite uh, visible. Quite soft. So we should do it with a lot of care. I can cut off and reduce this intestines here because they are very soft. Cut off and reduce it. Doesn't pose any problem if I reduce it. So if I reduce it now, I'll have it look as such. It's a display of the intestines. So here now, I have, this is the stomach that comes down, this is the liver here, the stomach here, this is the liver. Then you can see a small spleen here, this part here, the small part here is the spleen. Let me add some water, this one is clean, a small spleen here, and this is the stomach, this way, this is the liver. You see that these are already the intestines that come like this. Intestines are not as distinct as those of birds and mammals. So if you were to dis display the alimentary canal of a fish, this is just all you do. You just get it, pin it like this, and remove like this, and you draw a diagram. This is just simply all that you do. And in such a situation, you draw a diagram that looks like the one we put on the board. We have made this incision. We have cut up this way. We have pinned our side, and then we have displayed the alimentary canal as such. So this is the alimentary canal that has been displayed. So you see the stomach this way, and you can see the, the liver which is there, and you can see the small spleen. It's leveled somewhere up there, which we, which we have seen it. These are the gills here. Just simply need to level these parts that are there. This is just all. So it's not quite uh, complicated. So what we are going to do now is, we are going now to some of the fish. We have to remove the alimentary canal, because we do not need the alimentary canal. So I will remove the alimentary canal, so that we'll see now where the urinary system is. So I'll remove it. Remove it as such. This one we are going to display the urinary system. The urinary system of this fish. So this is the swim bladder, this part here. This is the swim bladder here. So when the fish takes up air, this part will be filled with air and the fish will be buoyant. It can float on the water. But when it sends out air, the swim bladder goes down and the fish becomes heavier and will sink to the bottom of the water. So this is the swim bladder and that is why when you stand on the riverside where there are fish in the water, you, you will see the fish constantly coming out of the water and gulping in the air. So when it gulps that air, it goes back into the swim bladder. It doesn't breathe with it. It breathes only using the gills and water. So when we remove the swim bladder, what we just have to see next to it is simply the kidneys. So these ones are just the kidneys of the fish on the two sides, which are lying inside the wound and looking red as blood. These are simply, if you were to display the genital system of the fish, the, the, the urinary system of the fish, you just simply remove all of this part and then remove the swim bladder. When you remove the swim bladder, what you see is just the kidneys. These are just the kidneys like this. And they come and join up here into the anal opening, to the anus here, where you have the anal opening, and then they send out their words. These are the kidneys. That is just all about the, you know, the urinary system. Something that looks like this, this one in the middle. So this is the kidneys that we are seeing here, this one. Like this. 
These are the kidneys that come and join down here. So there's a very small here. This is a very small bladder here. This one. It is called a sedo bladder because it is semi-functional. It doesn't store much feces. So immediately there's a little bit of feces there. It comes out. So we call it the sedo bladder. So this is all. So what we are to look now in the fish is to display the genital system, that's the reproductive system. So we are going to use this other fish and we'll see where the reproductive systems are located. So this fish and we said was a female. So we are going to remove now these intestines to observe the genital parts, that's the urinogenital system. So I will remove the intestines, these are they. I will remove them. We are done in the other one. Then you see that what we are left with here now, this one, is, what is here now, these ones are the ovaries, these two, like this. These are the ovaries. So this is, this is the ovary bearing so many eggs. These are the eggs of the fish, like this. So these are the two ovaries. So these ones, are, these are the urinogenital system of a female, these are the genital system of a female, female fish. So this is the swim bladder that we had talked about in the previous one. If we burst it, you see that air will come out, you see? It has come out, you see how it goes down. And then we'll keep this, our oviducts ducts containing eggs here, the ovaries, keep them on the side here. And then we'll remove the swim bladder. You see that I'm removing and you are seeing the kidneys, okay? So these are the kidneys down here. So only need to clean it up, clean it up. They want the heart, which is up here. We also remove the heart, because we do not need it for now. See that these are the urinogenital systems. So we can place these our ovaries this way, so that they are very visible. We place this one, place this one this way. They are very very visible. So we can put them on one side this way like this, so that the kidneys are very visible. So these are the urinogenital system of a female. So you dissect and place like that, you draw, you see that you have a diagram which looks as such. These are the ovaries containing so many eggs, and these are the kidneys. So you have the set of bladder down there, which we have seen. And then if it were a male, you will be able to see the testes. The testes are also as long as the ovaries, but they are very small and whitish in color. So you see that the testes will be whitish, but they will separate, and they are not as big as the ovaries containing eggs. So you will equally draw it, which is like this, which is a male, and as such, which is a female. So this is just all about dissection of fish. What is important is that you should have your fish, you place it, you dissect it first of all, and you draw your diagram to look like what you have dissected. Once you do that, clean up the board, clean your dissection, and you go away, the examiner will always give you your marks. So I hope that this is going to help you improve on.